So let's say you have some green screen footage, but it's handheld or the camera's moving and you're like, why, why have we done this? Well, here's how to deal with that. Here we have some footage of just some terribly shot green screen. And to make things even worse, it's handheld. Why would we do this? Why, why you do this? Well, that's <laughs> so I can show you how to fix it if you accidentally do this. Or if somebody hands you some footage that just sucks, there's a way to deal with that. See, the problem is that if you were to get rid of this green screen, which as we've discussed in other videos, takes a lot of work, and you put this over a background, if your footage is moving and your background isn't, that's a dead giveaway of a green screen, which, you know, it's, it's tricksy to make green screens look nice anyway. This one isn't even that bad, but it does feel a little weird because his body's sort of moving up and down a little bit and the background isn't moving at all. So one way that we can fix this is to track the camera movement on our green screen shot and apply it to our background as we merge our background behind our subject. This is fortunately very easy to do. So we'll take our original footage and I'll hit shift spacebar to bring up our select tool menu and I'll type PLA. That's gonna bring up our planar tracker and we'll add that and take the output of our footage and put it into the yellow input of our planar tracker. And what we wanna do is pick something that would move around just like our background would. A ideal subject for that would be the actual background. So. The only good part about shooting a green screen that's all jacked up like this is that you have plenty of information to track and you know you want to shoot with a moving camera or handheld or something. It's a good idea to put tracking markers on the screen for a similar reason. Of course, that opens up a whole new can of worms dealing with the tracking markers. But for this instance, we're just going to kind of select the part around our subject here like this. So I've just drawn an area around places that I know our subject isn't gonna be in front of and that's going to move like the background in our shot. Now we go over to the inspector, operation mode track, sounds good, tracker point, motion type perspective. Let's go to translation, rotation, and scale. And that should be good. I'll make sure to set our reference time. And we're gonna track forward with this track to end button like this. I'm gonna track that, go back to our reference time and then track this backward like that. What that'll do is track all of our motion for our whole shot. And now we can make a planar transform. Click that. That's going to add a planar transform node wherever it wants. It decided to put it right there today. And now we can take this and whatever we run through this transform is going to move just like our background. So let's go ahead and put this in between our background right after we merged it over our background node like this. And now we have our background moving along with our footage and it makes sense with the camera moves and everything. Oh, it all just works together. It's beautiful, not that hard to do. One thing to be aware of is that if you have a background that's a still or something that is a different size or aspect ratio than your original footage, like for instance, this background is a huge still, it's 5,000 by 3,000, and it's a different aspect ratio and everything. What I've done is merge this over a background node so that we can resize it and crop it and everything and it basically makes a 1920 by 1080 image, which is going to make sense when we feed it to our planar tracker. The planar tracker wants the footage that we tracked and the image that we're actually moving around with our tracking information to be the same size. If it's not the same size, then it's gonna get grumpy and it's gonna do weird stuff. So if you have a big image like this, make sure you either merge it over a background or you crop it or resize it to the same resolution as the footage that you tracked. So with all of that done, we have our match move and it was actually pretty easy. So that's how you do it. By the way, if you wanna learn more advanced stuff in Fusion, we have a course for that. If you're totally not familiar with how Fusion works, we have a basics course. And if you're a little bit, you know, you got, you got some chops, we have an advanced course. There are links to that down in the description. People who have gone through the class have loved it so far and very excited to share it with you. We just released a brand new chapter on green screen and dealing with poorly shot green screen. So uh, yeah, I definitely recommend checking it out. I hope that this video moved you. And that if you were expecting something from it, that it's a match because it's a match move. You get it? I get it. I think we're I think we're on the same level here. I think that we used a level, a carpenter's level to make sure that we had level movements. Yeah.